Lego Set 9516, otherwise known as the new Jabba's Palace, was released in 2012. Its original price was $119.99, and it had 717 pieces with 9 minifigures. Now this is one of my favorite Lego sets of all time, if not my favorite one. But we can't talk about it without first mentioning the original Jabba's Palace Lego set. That would be set number 4480, released in 2006, or 6 years before. And its price was significantly lower at just $29.99. But as you'll know if you've seen my video about that set, it only had 234 pieces. Even if you include the two expansion sets that were released alongside it, the total piece count was less than half of this set. Despite the somewhat nonsensical inclusion of Darth Maul in the upper right, the box is really quite attractive, and as you can see on the right, it shows you that there are ten figures included, nine of which are minifigures and one of which is a buildable figure. We'll cover that in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Seven of these figures are actually brand new for this set, with only two of the minifigures being reused from other sets. The back of the box does a pretty good job of showing off the various features of the set, but since we're going to be looking at those individually in detail, I'm not going to look at them right now. The overall design evokes the shape of Jabba's Palace, with its round central building and towers, while still including most of the key features of its interior. It's dominated by Jabba's throne room in the center, and there's no getting around the fact that it's quite small. You get the impression that everything has been distilled down to the absolute minimum. But there are lots of features and little nods to things seen in the film, and these go a long way toward giving this set some charm and playability. His throne slides back to reveal a trap door, just as it did in the film. You use this lever to open and close the door. Of course, it doesn't really lead anywhere at the moment, but we'll come back to that. There's another lever built in the back that can allow the throne to go forward, but not backward. And of course, who could forget the ballistic missile in the roof of the palace? Uh, well, okay, Lego being Lego, they apparently couldn't resist adding an unnecessary action feature like this. The throne can also be removed entirely, revealing a little hot plate where Jabba apparently cooks his snacks. Uh, this is actually a reference to the meat rotisserie behind his throne in the film. And there's even a little hidey hole for Jabba's spending money here. If we look at the other side of the set, you can see that they've recreated the palace door, admittedly at a very small scale. It includes the robotic doorman who can move in and out to greet visitors. The door slides up and down on a track and can be locked in place with the bar at the top. The back of the set has one more feature. The entire back wall of the throne room will open like this, allowing you a little bit easier access to the features I mentioned earlier. As you may have noticed earlier, Han Solo is actually hiding in the back of this carbonite block. I like how they have little handholds for him to hold on to there. If we take him out, you can see that he has on one side of his head a sort of sleeping face. And if you turn it around, he's got his normal face on the other side. But of course, the real star of the show is Jabba the Hutt himself. And this set includes a completely redesigned minifigure. He has, as you can see, a turning torso and a couple arms that move up and down. His body is covered with some paintwork uh, depicting his wrinkles, and they've even got his arm tattoo there. Uh, the eyes look pretty good as well. Now, compared to the original one that came with the previous Jabba's Palace set, you can see there's a stark difference in the approach. This was much simpler, no paint at all on the body or face. A uh, bit of a weird body shape, actually, with the thin tail. I have to say I prefer the new one quite a bit. Salacious Crumb was a completely new figure for this set. This one is made of a kind of rubbery material that bends pretty easily. He's got quite a large hole there in his bottom that allows him to sit on a Lego stud so he can sit there on the throne. Bib Fortuna has the usual cloth cape that a lot of minifigures come with. His head tentacles are actually removable as a sort of hat. And he's got kind of an intense facial expression there, I'll have to say. Of course, uh, the other previous set also had a Viv Fortuna figure, and it's not quite as different as the Jabba's were, but uh, still, you can see he looks a little bit more kindly. Uh, I think I'd have to give the edge to the new one on this as well. Ula is a brand new figure with this set, and I'll have to give 
credit to Lego for not only sort of having the courage to include her at all, but to uh, do a really good job. She's got, as you can see, the happy face on one side and a sort of dismayed face on the other. Definitely one of my favorites from this set. The Gamorrean Guard is one figure where you can see the difference in approach between Lego of 2012 and Lego of 2006 most clearly. It's just a night and day difference in terms of the amount of paint used and the realisticness of the sculpt and just everything. Uh, they both do share one thing, which is that you can take their entire torso and head off in one piece, which is a little bit odd. I definitely have to give the edge to this new version of the Gamorrean as well. One thing that didn't change very much was the Bamar Monk figure. In fact, they are essentially identical. They both use these samurai swords as legs and have orange plastic brains floating in their bowls. Leia as Bosch is a new character for Lego, and she has, of course, the thermal detonator and should have a backpack of some kind on the back. I'm not sure where mine is. You can remove her helmet to reveal her face, which has two expressions on it, as per usual. You can also add her hair there if you prefer her to be helmetless. And finally, we have Chewbacca, who, aside from the addition of these binders, seems basically the same as some of the earlier versions. Pretty simple. There's one more set we have to talk about in relationship to Jabba's Palace, and that is Lego set number 75005, otherwise known as the Rancor Pit. This was also released in 2012, but it was several months behind Jabba's Palace, as I recall, because we didn't know for sure that it was even going to be released at first. The original price was $59.99, and it included 380 pieces, three minifigures, and one buildable Rancor figure. This was, of course, technically a separate set from the Jabba's Palace set, but I have a feeling that almost everyone who bought this would have also had the Jabba's Palace set. There's not a lot to this set compared to the main Jabba's Palace set in terms of features. It's basically just the Rancor pit, and I think it's Truth be told, just an excuse to get the giant Rancor figure, but it does have an opening and closing gate that you can see here. Although the Rancor himself is actually a little bit too tall to effectively trap him underneath it. There's an opening door on the side there. And that's about it in terms of features, except for one more thing, which is sort of hidden. There's a little bit of a hidden compartment here that you access by picking up this skull and there's a key underneath it for some reason, not really sure where that came from. Like the throne room, the entire thing swings open on a hinge, allowing you a little bit easier access for play purposes. But of course the real appeal of this set is that it can be combined with the Jabba's Palace set by just plopping it right on top. It just sort of sits there by gravity and is held in place by some spikes. And now we can finally use the trapdoor as it was intended, sending Ula down to her doom. Poor kid. Of course, having the palace here on top does look a little goofy, and there's another problem with it. You can't open the Rancor's gate. However, if you slide it open like this, it kind of supports the tower section, and it also allows you to open the gate. So, I think that's one way to go. So let's take a closer look at the Rancor figure. This is made up of a number of pieces that you assemble, including some moving fingers and some claws as well, a uh, moving jaw that opens and closes, and moving arms. He's quite large and impressive, and uh, he passes the test of being able to fit a Gamorrean guard right in his mouth, so he gets full marks from me. You also get the Jedi Luke figure, complete with the bone that he sticks in the Rancor's mouth. One side of his head is a bit more mild-mannered, and the other side has a determined expression that you might use if he was being grabbed by the Rancor. Aside from that second Demorian guard, you also get the Rancor Keeper and his Rancor Pooper Scooper, I'm gonna say. He also has a double-sided face. On the other side is his sad face for after the Rancor gets crushed by his gate. Now when the Jabba's Palace set was originally available in stores, it was part of a very nice store display that you can see here. It was combined with the Droids Escape set and the Sarlacc and uh, Desert Skiff set. But as you can see, it didn't include the Rancor set, which hadn't yet been released. 
A couple of months after this was no longer available in stores, I managed to find one listed on eBay for not too expensive of a price, and I managed to pick it up even though I did have to drive a couple hours to get it. Here you can see it on top of one of my tall display cabinets in my office. It's a little hard to reach, so I'm going to show you some photos of when I first got it. It's got some really cool custom paper scenery and background. And it has LED lighting, as you can see, which would have been on while it was on display in the stores. I really like the little details they added here, like C-3PO's square footprints. A lot of these kind of displays have some kind of action feature, and this is no exception. If you turn the disc there at the bottom, you can make Jabba's Palace rotate, as I'll show you right here. Of course, all of the figures and everything are hot glued in place so that they won't move. And here is the Skiff and Sarlacc Pit set. You can see that the Skiff is actually attached to a metal bracket. A couple other things related to these sets. I have covered in previous videos the Chinese knockoffs or bootlegs of the Jabba and Rancor minifigures. And uh, I, to make a long story short, they're very close to the actual retail figures, although there are ways of telling the difference, especially with the Jabba. But I do think it's interesting that such high-quality copies are now fairly widely available. The other thing I really should mention about this set is that it was at the center of a bit of a controversy back in 2013. The Turkish Cultural Community of Austria, which is apparently a group representing some Muslim residents of Austria, accused Lego of racism, saying that the toy was based on the Hagia Sophia Mosque in Istanbul, and that the minifigures depicted Asians and Orientals as people with deceitful and criminal personalities. Needless to say, this is a bit of a stretch. I suppose the palace does bear a passing resemblance to the mosque, but it's worth noting that the mosque was originally built as a Greek Orthodox Christian church, and is now actually a museum. This story spread across the internet like wildfire, and was made much worse by subsequent sloppy reporting on the part of many so-called news sites, saying that LEGO would actually be discontinuing the toy because of the complaints. As you can imagine, many people didn't hesitate to use this as a reason to attack Muslims in general, despite the fact that it was, in fact, completely false. And I'll have to say, LEGO took extraordinary steps to combat this misinformation, from responding to individual users on Twitter to eventually issuing an official statement on their website, clarifying that while the toy would eventually be discontinued, it was no different than any other LEGO set in that regard. And indeed, the set stuck around for many months afterward. It did, in fact, disappear from many store shelves, but that was because scalpers were trying to make a quick buck on a banned set, and not because LEGO had pulled them. A search on eBay for banned LEGO would return many of these sets for quite a long time. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a great set, but it's also a little small. And ever since I first got it, I decided that I wanted to try and make my own version that would be bigger and include more features and be just more suitable to a galactic crime lord. So this is what I came up with. While I can put together pre-made LEGO sets with the best of them, I am far from being an expert LEGO designer, so this was quite an undertaking for me. It took a number of weeks of testing various designs, and it also took uh, two or three sets of each of the uh, Jabba's Palace and Rancor sets. I got most of them on eBay, cheaply without the minifigures, so it wasn't all that expensive. Even just coming up with my own full-size throne was no easy task. I tried to make everything as accurate as I could, within reason, and, you know, I think it turned out pretty well. I also made my own version of Max Rebo's Red Ball Jet Organ, because the, the one that is included in the set that he's from, which is the new sail barge is not fantastic, so I made a full-sized version of that, made some full-sized tables for Jabba's Palace denizens to sit at, and just generally made it a much larger space. It's kind of funny, I made this several years ago, and when I took it out again to look at, I was actually kind of impressed with myself at all the little details like that control panel there next to Han Solo. I like the way the top of the official set just sort of sat there on top of the Rancor pit and was removable, so I decided to do the same thing with my design, and actually it came out really well. This way you can access the entire 
Rancor Pit for play, and then just put the top of the palace back when you're done. There are a few details around the back of the set. If you want to take a look, we have the actual meat rotisserie that's behind Jabba's throne, along with the frying pan, which I threw in there. And, of course, we have the Rancor Pit gate, and it opens in much the same way that it does in the actual Rancor Pit set. I had originally planned to make an opening trap door in the middle of the upper floor so that Ula or whoever could be sent down into the pit, but I had trouble even just making the top floor stable enough and I wasn't able to add a trap door. I planned to come back to it later and I never actually did. So that's my custom Jabba's Palace set. I've seen a lot bigger and more impressive ones than this since I made this one, but uh, this is mine, so of course I like it best. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Jabba's Palace and Rancor Pit sets. And hopefully I will have more LEGO-related content sometime in the not-too-distant future. Thanks very much for watching.